Ah, uh, so hey guys, I think we got a little bit of a hydrant issue going on here. I thought I would take you along on this. This could very well be a, a all-round plumbing type project. We might end up sweating some pipes here. Well, I think we will end up doing that. Um, so what's going on? We got we got this yard hydrant sitting out here, and there's a lot of water sitting around this. This could have been going on for a while longer, and we just didn't really catch it until now. We normally keep a little kiddie pool sitting here, filled up with water, so the dog can lay in. He's always getting in there, sloshing water out. So. Anyways, we're out last night topping off animal feed and water and sort of noticed the hissing sound and then I started looking down there, got the pool all the way and drained out and uh, even saw a little bit of water movement going on. So I think there's water leaking somewhere down below here. So I'm thinking there's, there's one of two things going on here. Uh, the way these things work is there's a long pipe that sits and goes down below the frost line. At the very bottom, there's a little rubber plunger that sits and seals things off. And then just above that, there's a little drain port. So when you shut the water off, that plunger seats, and then that drain port, uh, any water that's in the pipe then drains back down and out that drain port. So if that rubber uh, plunger is not seating right, there might be a little bit of water seeping up and then going out that drain port and just really saturating the ground here. The other thing I'm thinking is potentially going on, because we had a very similar issue to this with our well about two years ago, is the actual connection to the hydrant itself from the water line. With our well a few years ago, the pipe that goes up and then it takes a 90 and then runs to the house, there was a little piece that corroded away. The ground got really saturated and I had to dig all the way down there and replace that piece. And it really wasn't that bad of a project, a relatively cheap project, but it was just a lot of digging. And what added the cost to it was having to go out and rent a trash pump because every time I dug down, that water would start filling back up and I had to continue to pump water out until I could get down. And I think I actually ended up having to dig down eight feet, but these shouldn't be that deep. These, these yard hydrants are six to eight feet. So anyways, let's uh, start getting into this project and uh, see where it takes us. So we're down in our utility room right now. You can see this black pipe that runs down. This one ends up going to a faucet on the outside here. And then this one here uh, goes down here along the ground and goes out. And that's what feeds the hydrants. Unfortunately, in our place, it seems like when they built this, they decided to uh, neglect putting in some shutoff valves. So in order to be able to shut the water up out there, we have to shut off the main and there's no way to just shut off that section. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a shutoff valve put in. Two options, one I can either put it so it cuts off both the hydrant and this outside uh, spigot, or I can put it just for the hydrant. I think what I'm gonna do is try sneaking in here, especially since we got this flexible pipe here, it'd be pretty easy to uh, just kind of move this back a little bit and stick that in. So. so this is one of my plumbing boxes. I would really recommend getting something to organize. Well, I guess you can't really call it a super organized, but Kind of keeps all my plumbing stuff together here. Here we go, we got a perfect. 3 4 inch, which is the pipe size that we're working with here. Looks like solder in on both ends. So we're gonna use this shutoff valve here. We're gonna need something to clean up the copper pipe with, so we'll use some kind of nice fine grit sandpaper. These tools also work really well. This is half inch here to kind of clean things up. 3 4 so we'll need that one. We're going to need something to cut the pipe. These things work pretty good. You basically stick the pipe in there, tighten the thing up on it, run it around a bunch of times, tighten it up. Gives you a nice clean cut. We're going to need some solder and we're going to need some flux. And then we're going to need our little propane torch to heat up that pipe. So we'll round up the tools here and then we will uh, head in. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off the power to our well. Uh, and then we'll turn on some faucets and drain out some water and then we'll cut into our piece and solder things in. I would really recommend uh, filling up a couple pitchers of water just in case things are down for a little while. So after taking a little closer look at you know what I have for ball valve and everything, this piece would probably work, but I'm really cutting it tight and having enough pipe to actually stick into both ends of this. Uh, and then running the risk of breaking both these solder points. So then I was thinking maybe I could stick it here. I'm going to have to be a little careful so when I'm heating things up, I'm not really close to this. 
So I think that will be end up being my plan of attack is sticking this uh, ball valve right in here instead. So we sand this down so we get some nice shiny copper. Then what we need to do is make sure we clean out the inside of this ball valve as well on both ends here. So that's where this brush ends up coming in real handy. You just run that on in. Get things nice and shiny in there and cleaned up. And do that on both ends. So I ended up having to come in here and actually run the torch for a few minutes. There was a big ball of solder that was dripped down from the original one and I uh, had to get that removed. So I, I cleaned that up by heating it up and then after I got the big ball of it removed then I came back in and hit it with sandpaper again. So this pipe should be nice and cleaned up. One thing you'll notice, I got a piece of cement board behind here, especially when you're working with like this uh, part of a basement or something that's not finished. You got this plastic around here to seal things in. This stuff's really easy to melt. So. Uh, using cement board to help protect and, and re reduce the risk of any sort of fire or even like plastic or something like this melting is uh, definitely a, uh, a smart idea. So one thing I probably should have mentioned before getting in here and cutting stuff is pay attention to which way your ball valve opens and closes. Especially if you're working in real tight areas where you can run up against um, clearance issues. This is probably not the best example but let's say I was installing it here and I had planned on putting it in this direction. Um, and you can see this ball valve opens and closes going this way and it would be bumping up against this. Uh, ball valves generally don't have a directional that they need to face. If there is, there's usually an arrow indicating something like that. But it's usually best practice to actually have this face in the direction of the air flow or the water flow. So for example, it's coming from our pressure tank coming down this pipe and going out that way. So ideally I want to have this ball valve facing this way and then just making sure that I can still open and close it freely without bumping up against something. So for the tools I'm going to use to get these pipes sweat, I'm going to use a little propane torch here. Uh, I really like these ones with these little click buttons on them. Uh, that way you can set your torch down, use two hands, pick things back up, just a little bit less of a risk. And they're real easy to get up and going. All you got to do is just hit the button and you got your heat source there. And of course, like I mentioned before, we're going to use a little solder here. Uh, and flux. Flux is something I really like to go a little heavy on. I just seem to have better success getting the thing sealed uh, first time. Usually uh, I go a little heavy on the stuff. I, I almost never have an issue with a pipe not sealing very quickly. And then we're going to use just a little brush here to apply this flux on there. <music> Also when applying this flux, make sure you get it all the way around. There's no area that's left untouched here. So now what we'll do is we'll start applying heat. You might even start to see things glow a little orange. Uh, they'll come in with their solder and you just see it get sucked right on in. So now the moment of truth. Get the pipe sweated. We'll let them just cool for just a few minutes here. And then we'll uh, kick on the well here. So I'm not feeling any water at all. I'm not seeing anything here. I'm going to shut off the water here to the hydrant. We'll see here. So you can probably tell the hydrant's leaking. I bet you any money we turn this on, you can hear the water run. You hear that? All right, so we at least got that dealt with. Now we got to figure out what's going on with the hydrant. So one last little quick tip before you go turn on your faucets in your house. If the faucet has the ability to remove the screen that's under there, sometimes they just untwist off. Uh, I recommend doing that. It seems like when you're kind of clearing the air out of the lines and that water's really rushing through it and breaks and build up off, you know, maybe a little iron or something like that and can clog those screens up. 